then so a hollow request or a couple of requests to just go through the uh, off-axis guider setup that I'm using <clears throat> this little off-axis guider with a twist that I did a video on a little while ago <clears throat> stick a link somewhere you know up here <laughs> To that so basically i'm just going to go through the just general off-axis guider setup with the adapters that i've found useful and uh, yeah to the system that i have <clears throat> so i've got my set here with a reducer on it i have my um set to t2 adapter i have a t2 to m 48 adapter. I have my off axis guider. This is a thin uh, profile off axis guider from uh, Skywatcher. And I got a few 7mm, 14mm, another 14mm uh, T2 to T2 adapter. And I got my little um, T2 um, ring for my DSLR. I, on the all factor guider side i have a few things you can have um well if you're just using an all factor guider as it is with no special things on it you can just get fittings for it just thread it straight onto the um end and uh get just get the spacing in so you in focus or you can get a um, t2 to one point a 25 inch nose piece adapter and stick your nose piece on top of the in the camera then you have more adjustability for the, get the correct spacing <clears throat> yeah that's easy uh, so then <clears throat> what i do here that's a bit different is that well this is a, a point a f7 system with the reducer on it f10 without the reducer that means that this um, the off axis guider and the guide camera here that I have is quite, it's not the well, most sensitive one, it's, it works fine, but it's, uh, yeah, it's not the most sensitive. So, and you also get quite a narrow field of view. So, I got a little reducer, a little point 0.5 reducer from Astro, is the make for it. Yeah, cheap little thing that works really nice that I used to fit in the um, 1.25 nose piece or the nose piece adapter. You can also fit it on top of the nose piece if you have enough back focus. And the good thing, if you have enough back focus to use this, then you do get your full uh, 0.5 reduction out of it <clears throat> when you stick it in there because you have enough spacing in there. That's the whole thing with this is that um, the reduction you get from the reducer is depending on the spacing between the reducer and the imaging sensor if you're too short you get less reduction and that is a problem here that we'll touch on here shortly <clears throat> so back to our setup yeah so you got the set adapter and to fit it into the off-axis guider i need to put a t2 to M48 adapter. It's good with the standards, yeah? Everyone should have one, really. Yeah, so that's really what we got here. <clears throat> so, and this then. So, I, this is an um, SCT adapter from uh, Omegon, and the thing that is just so uh, thin, it's very nice. I think this builds. Oh, I can't really remember. Got a caliper here. <clears throat> I think we're looking at something like 12 millimeters. <clears throat> I'll get the correct number in here somewhere. Though. Anyway, <clears throat> let's call it 12. Just for fun. So we'll fit this onto our off axis guider. Yeah. And we want to have the off-axis guider 
as close to this as possible because we want as much back focus in here as I just described to get the proper um, <coughs> um, production out of the reducer. Normally, I guess you can just, well, <coughs> guess, um, do what's convenient for you. Maybe you want to get something else in here, like a little filter slider or something. Um, and in that case, I guess you want to have it on this, on the camera side of the off axis guider anyway. So <coughs> you want to have that as slim as possible and as close to the telescope end as possible. <coughs> yes, so that's that fitted on there. And uh, then, thing out, I had a one. 05 back focus from the reducer yeah and that means that that's about here somewhere yeah and my camera is a dslr and with the dslr and the t2 adapter it fits consumes 55 millimeter of the back focus and if i have 105 that's only 50 millimeter left here um, in real estate for me to use for <coughs> for anything else so that's not a whole lot so in here comes all the little slim slim fitting stuff yeah so yeah <coughs> uh, now we have da -da 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 -da, what was that about 30 millimeter so from 50 to about 30, that gives us, well, about 20 millimeter left. And <clears throat> what I have here is a 14 millimeter T2 to T2 adapter and a seven millimeter, that's 21. So we're about one millimeter too far out then. And <clears throat> honestly, I'm not really sure if that matters too much. I've tried to compare it with, I took a picture of a rooftop uh, with a often back focus and with just a millimeter or two or something out and I could not it was less than a percentage in in loss of aperture or in reduction of field of view we'll take a look here I'll, I'll show you what exactly I'm talking about okay so here's a little simple image very very simple image of an optical tube uh, of the SCT type uh, the one that I've got here. So here you have your main mirror with that um, hole in the center. You have your secondary mirror uh, fitted on a corrective plate here in the front. And at the end here I have my reducer. So <clears throat> with this system I have an uh, optimum back focus of 105 millimeter from this face to the point of focus. Yeah. So, I'm just going to type in green here when it's really how it looks when it's good. One hundred and five millimeter right here. If we want to change our focus, if we for some reason wants to fit in, we can't fit our um, uh, filters and an off axis guider and we won't need to shift the focus back. What's happening then? Well, in this system, I'm actually shifting my mirror, my primary mirror forward here. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to make that orange. Yeah, actually red. Yeah. And I'm going to make it far out just to prove uh, or show a point here. So, yes, do you see what's going on? What's going on here is that we're, by shifting the mirror forward to get the focal point further back, the light from the edge of the uh, mirror here is not hitting our secondary mirror. It's only some distance in on the mirror that we start getting like hitting the mirror so we'll have a smaller image a smaller field of view you'll lose aperture by not using this 
not only does we lose aperture but we might the light here is going to go somewhere it might hit the edge of the um, fitting of the mirror it might hit the corrector plate it might bounce around and cause um, all kinds of uh, reflection and goats and stuff in the image so it's it's bad bad news <clears throat> really um, regardless of how it comes yes whatever is going to happen if it comes further in I'm, i've never tried it i don't know uh, maybe nothing um that's usually not the issue of the uh, focal point being too far in really um so maybe nothing we're not going to use all of the secondary mirror if that has any effects whatsoever i don't know really how dangerous it is to go slightly above there's like a slightly um like an exponential function to this where the first little millimeters that you go above above this it doesn't really cause that much of effect but quite soon it'll wrap off and you will get a massive change in image scale and you'll lose aperture and etc so slightly above it maybe it doesn't really matter i mean if you're missing that one millimeter or something adapter for it then i'll just stick it in and, and just try it um i'm like maybe a millimeter out and i'm not suffering uh, that much i think <clears throat> so anyway yeah that's it um that's it for illustrations here Let's go back to our system <clears throat> yes so anyway that goes on there there is these like um, fine tuning ones so if you really need to get if you have to get the perfect back focus then you can get something that you can just adjust in to get it just right yeah <clears throat> and I have one of them too but uh, yeah I didn't suffer for this so I just got stuck using it and then I got the Nikon or the Nikon S um, DSLR adapter on there. So that is the end of my camera. So you stick the camera on there, get the focus in. So this is perfectly in focus. <clears throat> now I'm ready for the off-axis guider. Yeah. So um, we talked about this. It was about uh it's just about 25 let's just call it 25 millimeter <clears throat> from the face to the prism okay so <clears throat> what we have here in the off-axis guider is a uh, an opening here and then here we have a little slider and it's a prism held by a hollow tube yeah slides in there so the prism collects some of the light that is not taken up by the sensor you have to be a bit careful when you adjust this in so that you don't put it in in the view of the sensor so it needs to be just outside the view of the sensor <clears throat> you also have a little two mil allen screw there and what you do with that is that you can actually slide this um, camera fitting on this tube to fine tune your focus. Yeah. And I found that quite handy here. So <clears throat> this from the say, center of the um, prism up to the end of this tube, you have 44 millimeter. Roughly call it 44. And we have to add take that from the uh, back focus that we have left so it was about let's call it 25 millimeter from the start of the back focus to the prism and then it's um, 44 that gives us 69 or something yeah millimeter <coughs> yeah what we also have then is let's get a sheet and calculator out. So we had 105 minus uh, 69 millimeter gives us 36. Uh, this has about 12 and a half millimeter 
from the sensor to the edge here. Yeah, minus 12.5. Here's a 23.5 millimeters. <clears throat> yeah, left or back focus. Uh, now that's plenty enough. I mean, if you can, um, you can just, uh, if it's too far, you just undo this and you just pull it back a little bit, like I've done here, so that you get some of that back focus off. <clears throat> Uh, if it's too much, then you might have a nose piece in there and a little nose piece adapter, and you can just slide this out and fine tune it. Yeah, that's no problem. But like I said, I want to put a reducer in here um, so that my field of view gets uh, larger, and most importantly, that the f value get reduced so I get a brighter image. <coughs> yes. So I got this little. T2 to 1.25 inch nose piece adapter <clears throat> and I basically just you know, slide in my um, uh, reducer right in there yeah and now <clears throat> I said that I want to have as much spacing between the reducer and the imaging sensor as I can and I said that from the end of the um, optic tube from the prism here, you had uh, 23 millimeter left <coughs> when it from from this edge to the tube there. <coughs> and when you stick a reducer in there, that gets well slightly reduced. So now the 23. 0.5 millimeter that would be enough to get almost down to 0.5 reduction but if you stick the reducer in there that's going to get a lot shorter which means that you're going to get a lot closer and you're not going to get your full 1.5 uh, 0.5 reduction <clears throat> so and you have to basically fine-tune this so what i did was i figured that uh, a 14 millimeter spacer here was just enough and then to get the focus in what I did and if you have a really expensive um, reducer here so I suggest don't get a real expensive one what I basically did was I loosened this up so that the reducer slides inside the nose piece adapter <clears throat> and then I take a um, stick this on the uh, attach the camera Attach everything to the there. You make sure this is in focus, <clears throat> and now you connect this your camera up to your computer, and you adjust the um, uh, focus now by basically using a two millimeter Allen screw, Allen key on the little set screw there. And you basically slide this um, uh, adapter fitting on the tube and get the focus in. And basically, if you need to push it up, it will well, move the whole setting in to get focus. It will the um, tube will basically push the um, uh, reducer up closer to the sensor to get focus or if you need to go back down you'll just move it down and it will basically drop down with that tube so you're gonna have like face-to-face -face contact with the producer and the optical tube there so <clears throat> if you're really afraid of the it being damaged in any way you be really careful or you just get something cheap or you find something to protect it with anyway I'm not care I'm not too afraid for that so I'm just basically been sliding that up and down to get perfect focus and once you've done that, you basically do as I've done in that little video. You, uh, uh, you take a picture um, with this in focus without the reducer. And then you take another picture with this and the reducer. Um, and then you basically calculate the, uh, well, the image scale difference between the two. And from there you can see how much, your, uh, how much you have reduced your... Um, your image with with that setting yeah 
again i'll put a link there so watch that video so i don't have you do that again here yeah but that's fairly simple i mean uh, the back focus is the same for any off-axis guider setup and this just means that you will need to fine-tune the uh, focus between the uh, reducer and the camera using that sliding um, uh, set screw <clears throat> so yeah uh, shouldn't be too hard yeah uh, it's like fiddle about the only thing is that you need to calculate your real focal um, the real uh, reduction that's the only thing that's a bit of a <clears throat> pain in it but um, yeah it's I think it's worth it you get a lot of better light in there and uh, <clears throat> I I haven't so far been unable to find a guide star using this you do have to like loosen this and then turn this whole thing around um, the optical axis to find a guide star that's fairly normal <clears throat> so you frame your target in first with your camera so that you know you're in in <clears throat> have it um, where you want it and then you um, use this to find a guide star you check again that you're in in uh, you framed in if you're not this off axis guider I'm sure m many of them have the same type it's got these little um, cramp screws so you can basically <coughs> pull this out and rotate your imaging camera uh, so in steps of 120 degrees so that if you didn't like your if you find a good guy star in one position but you didn't like your framing you have two other options to <coughs> to uh, fine-tune your your framing yeah so but it, it works nicely really like it so um, and I also use it for my uh, refractor even though it's just a 500 millimeter um, focal length I mean this works that beautifully I mean it, you get an even better field of view and uh, um, you get reduced um, weight of the system you do get a little bit more weight on the um, part that actually uh, you do the focusing with on the refractor that I'm using and that's not the best but overall I, I really like it so yeah well so that's it um, let me know just let me know if you think that I've been talking out my ass here and that something is completely wrong um and i can stand corrected if or we can um agree to disagree or whatever yeah but yeah just let me know if you try it and if you like it or if you don't like it what's not to like etc so that's it yeah so <clears throat> good luck may the dark side be with you Tulu.